and no lab coat today, but I still got something pretty awesome. Hey guys, it's time to revisit my power menu tiles. A couple of weeks ago I've talked about them in this video here and I know that probably wasn't as interesting because I was showcasing the actual frameworks and advantages of doing it on your own, but I didn't show you any concrete examples. Now this is gonna change in a couple of videos including this one because I'm going to show you how to achieve really cool things with it. We're going to start with sensors. If you're using the default power menu with typical automation from Google Home or Alexa, then you will know that, well, you can add or remove tiles, but even if the sensors are individually supported, you'll have to add a couple of them. I am using my DIY smart heating. I've created it over a couple of years and it's pretty cool. I have a seven sensors. If you're using a default power menu with default ecosystem, then if they do support uh, individual sensors, you'll end up with seven different tiles. Thanks to my individual power tiles, I've changed that and I was able to dump all that information from every sensor into a single tile. There is a last thing to address. I know that the power menu is available on Android 11. If you don't have Android 11, however, well, you can't have the power menu, but you can still modify the project to have the same information displayed in, for example, a permanent notification using auto notification instead. Each individual sensor will support temperature, humidity, and pressure. But don't worry if your individual sensor doesn't have all those three values, I've taken care of that as well. Also, I've color coded the icons so you could quickly establish whether any of the sensors need extra attention. As you can see, the node red part isn't complicated at all. Uh, for the most part, all you have to do is really open the settings and go to on start and then just fill your preferences, whether you want uh, temperature in Celsius or Fahrenheit or pressure in hectopascals or inches of mercury. And that's pretty much it. Oh, there is one more thing that you have to add, which is uh, names of the joint devices that you would like to uh, send the data to. So in this case, I have two phones and I'm gonna send it there. How it works is for each sensor, you have to create, in this case, I'm using MQTT, but if you have a different protocol, for example, REST, it will work as well. So for each sensor, you have to add this node, which is gonna set the message topic to uh, the name of the room. And this is required. So each sensor should have a name and that name, it's going to be displayed on your uh, smart tile. So in here I have uh, four different sensors that contributes towards the data store. And now the data store is uh, actually displayed in here and you can look it up the current temperatures, etc. So this is the structure and don't worry if your sensor just reports the temperature or temperature and humidity. If you don't have one or the other, it's going to be taken care of automatically as well. Now, uh, in a second uh, group in here, we have power menu sensor data, and I've decided I'm going to submit all that information every five minutes. Now, it means it doesn't mean that the sensor data is going to be cycling every five minutes. This is actually done locally on Tasker, and I'll explain that in a detail. In a and this is something I'm going to cover in a Tasker section. Simply import the Tasker profile and run PMS set tile which will add a default tile for you. Now just add it to Active Rooster because Tasker cannot do it and you are set to go. Now three profiles to take care of the logic in auto update sensor that happens every 10,000 ticks. So that's 10 seconds and it updates the no action tile, which you cannot interact with. And if you want the interaction, you have to use a button tile instead. And it uses a command assigned to a tile. And you can see that when I'm tapping on it, it changes different sensors. 
Inside a main task, I set a couple of variables and a counter, which basically gonna check how many different sensors or rooms you've got in your dataset and then cycle through all of them. Now, later on, I created some fake if conditions that are going to hide basically logic of translating Celsius to Fahrenheit and displaying different dataset. If you open temperature icon, you'll notice that there are icons in there that also change the colors. Now, to make the icons work, you will need to download the icons and drop them into a task folder. I've included that in uh, the description of this video. If you want to change the ranges of the temperature responsible for handling colors, there is a temperature icon section in which you can change the values, the numerical values responsible for ranges. Just make sure you do it in Celsius if you're operating in Celsius and in Fahrenheit if you uh, have your um, units in Fahrenheit. That was quite simple, isn't it? And it doesn't really require that much of a setup to make it work. Now, some of you probably noticed that there is an extra tile in there, which is Wake Online, which also gives me a status of the PC behind me. Now, this is a subject for another video, so if you're interested in that, well, it gives you a reason to follow me either on YouTube or my social media. So, if you found this project interesting, in the description of this video, you're going to find a link to the article explaining everything in more details, so you could take it at your own pace. You'll be able to download the Node Red Flow and the Tasker project and make it work for yourself. As for now, guys, do let me know in the comments what else I could use the smart tiles or power tiles for best ideas. Well, I'm going to take them in consideration and maybe turn them into a tutorial. Thanks so much for watching and what I'm going to say is I don't have a posting schedule so if you don't want to miss a next episode, video, tutorial or whatever, you know how YouTube works, I'm not going to explain you that. But if you follow me on social media then you'll get to engage in a conversation with me and suggest something directly. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time. Take care. Bye.